At the Niaru Menting Jungle School, it's a new day and time for class. At the Group 1 and 2 dorms, Valentino's back on gate monitor duty. And Chinta's first out for the older kids. But some aren't allowed out of their cages this morning. Forest School 3 student Lanting and Group 2 student Kajora seem upset to not be let out with their friends. Because they have an appointment with the vets. Both students had cuts on their hands, and this morning should be their final checkup. Lanting had his stitches recently removed, while Kajora's wound is pretty much healed. She's really just providing emotional support for little Lanting as the vets check his cut. He hates the saline wash. Perhaps he's playing to his audience. After the cleanup, they're off. But the daily excitement has only just begun. Today, Kajura gets to visit Lanting's Group 3 class, and she's not alone. Svenja, Lala, and Big Belly Benny are also on the field trip roster. These youngsters are the most advanced Group 2 students. Today is a trial run to see how they'll cope in a new class. Forest Group 3 has moved to a brand new location, a much longer walk than these kids are used to. On the platform, in a ferny grotto, breakfast is served to all. Lala bags herself a prime spot right next to the fruit basket. But Benny's got his eyes on her. Her first lesson this morning is always be vigilant with your breakfast banana. <laughs> Benny's the forest school fruit hog. Even with all appendages full, he doesn't waste any opportunity to steal fruit. At three years old, he's already heavier than a Group 5 student. Benny's come a long way since he first arrived at jungle school. When he was two years old, he was found alone climbing a cell phone tower. Local police rescued him, and he was brought to Niaru Menting. Back then, he had skinny arms and legs, but the community that found him reported that he already had a love of guavas and bananas. Now, Benny enjoys an endless supply of fruit, which may not be a good thing. His expanding girth has forced his babysitters to reduce his banana intake and put him on a diet, 
with an emphasis on leafy greens. An obese orangutan would have trouble climbing and a very difficult life in the wild. Like humans, Benny's also at risk of developing heart disease. He puts up with leafy greens occasionally, but takes every opportunity to revert to his old ways. He spies a milk bucket group forming. And while babysitter Ursula is distracted, Benny makes a roll for it. He dives right in for a mouthful of rich milk. But his escapade is short-lived. The babysitters will have to keep a keen eye on this milk thief if he's to lose any weight. Back on Bungamut Island, it's time for round two of Operation Catch Casper. The capture team locates him in a more open part of the forest. The sparse trees here make for an easier shot than yesterday when Casper was in the dense jungle. Yeah. But the kings are long way up. The sniper's aim is true. And Casper lets the team know he's not happy. He tosses away the dart and climbs higher. But with a heavy sedative working its way through his body, this is dangerous. It can take less than 10 minutes for the sedative to take effect, so the capture team must act fast. 200 pound Casper poses a much greater challenge for the net setup than most release candidates. The net must be kept extremely taut to break Casper's fall. And if it isn't high enough off the ground, Casper could still hit the forest floor when he falls. An impact from this height could prove fatal. As the sedative kicks in, King Casper transforms from a hulking brute into a gentle giant. The capture team secures the net using the framework of an old feeding platform to give it some extra height. But as they make a last second adjustment, the net slips at the worst possible moment. This could have been devastating. But the team's lightning reflexes have helped break Casper's fall and saved his life. The vets urgently check him. If he has even one broken bone, 
it could drastically delay his return to the wild. Their initial examination suggests nothing's broken, but they won't know the full story until he's checked out back at base. As a precaution, Vet Marios gives him an anti-inflammatory shot. This will help reduce potential swelling and ease any pain from the fall. They're not out of the woods yet, though. The team must get the king to the transfer truck waiting at a nearby village before the sedative wears off. And Casper's already stirring in his sleep. If he regains consciousness in transit, he could topple the tiny boat. Vet Marios keeps a close eye on his charge as they race off to the village. Hey, Love Nature fans. Be sure to like and subscribe to catch all our wild animal stories. Get closer to nature right here on YouTube.